Right, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Laura Broom. Um, Andy briefly presented me. Um, I'm talking to you from Lisbon, most specifically from Cascais, uh, where I live. Um, I'm going to be telling you a little bit about Portugal and more specifically about two trips that I guide for Nature Trek. Um, just before we get into the talk, a little bit about me. I did work for Nature Trek for a brief time as an ops and operations assistant, and then I moved back to Portugal to work for the Portuguese Society for Birds, which is the um, the Portuguese Bird Life Partner. So it's kind of a, a smaller RSP. Um, the all the pictures on my presentation are either mine, but not many actually, because I'm not I'm not a for I don't take that many photographs. Um, some are from lovely clients that were on these trips, and then some I've just taken off the internet and things like that. But they all have uh, people's names, I think, on them. So let's get cracking. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the birding and stargazing in rural Alentejo. Um, this trip happens uh, uh, in November, so I'm actually off in less than 15 days on this trip. Uh, and then it also happens in February and March. So one trip in November and one either in February and March. And I think next, next year we have an overflow departure already set up. Just a quick map of what uh, where we go. Um, so people fly in into Lisbon. So that's where I usually pick the group up. And we cross the bridge and we go into the Tegus Estuary. Um, so we stay two nights here at a lovely lodge, which I'll show you a picture of in the next slide. Um, we stay two nights here where we explore the Tegus Estuary Nature Reserve. So it's one of the biggest estuaries in Europe. Uh, very important for uh, bird migration. Two nights here, and then we are off to the other side of Portugal, literally. Um, Spain is over on the white side of this slide. We go to Terina, where we stay at another lovely lodge, which I'll show you a picture of later. And we stay there for about four nights. Um, the stargazing part of the trip is usually only in Terina, where we work with um, the Alkiva Dark Sky Reserve. You see further down here, um, they have a really nice spot uh, there that we visit for a couple of nights where we do some stargazing. Usually on the first night, they actually take up their scopes up to the lodge. So we do a stargazing ses session from the lodge, which is lovely. Uh, and we also go there during the day for a sun viewing session. Um, and other than the stargazing, uh, during the day, we are out and about looking at birds. We won't do many early uh, rises because we will be um, up for a little bit later on, um, a little bit later than the usual trips, usually the, the birding trips. Um, so that's it for uh, this little map. Uh, here we go. So this is the Estuary Nature Reserve. So the first day, I usually aim to take you straight out in the field. Uh, we have a picnic lunch uh, that I usually take with me. Um, and as you can see, there are lots and lots of birds here. Um, most of these pictures are very big flocks of glossy ibis. Uh, there's a really big population of glossy ibis and they're they are increasing in numbers, so we will see lots of those. This church here is the Nossa Senhora de Alcame, which is the patron of the people that work in these fields here. So I usually try and get there um, to have the picnic there. There's some steps we can sit on. I, sometimes I don't get there because there are so many things to see on the way and I can't. So we usually, sometimes we have the picnic on the way, but I just lay that on the, um, on the nine-seater uh, mini buses that we use to uh, travel. So these are the lovely lodges I was telling you about. These are wooden lodges set um, in a cork oak forest. Um, they are really lovely. I really like to stay here. There's about 12 lodges, I think, in a circle. And each one of us or a couple stays in a different lodge. And they have a kitchen and everything so you can do tea. Um, you can sit outside in the balcony just listening to the birds during the night. Uh, I've heard Tony Owl. I think some people have heard Barn Owl as well, which is great. Um, what we do, because this is not a hotel, what we do is we do go out for the meals. So the breakfast, 
either um, there is another house not very far where they serve us breakfast or we do go out in the into the local cafes which is great so you can get a little taste of the local pastries Portuguese are famous for pastries this is one of the things I missed when I was living in the UK <laughs> um and for the evening meals we do go out to restaurants as well and I organize all of that um I am a vegetarian myself so I'm always uh, on worrying about people's dietary requirements and it's usually um, okay so don't worry about that um so these are the lodges that we stay at so we stay here for a couple of nights uh, a few more pictures of the places that we visit so in the morning we'll go around and look at some salt pans and marshes and things like that this is the picnic spread that I usually um, do, that we usually do for you. Um, and we usually have picnics outside because it's always nice weather, <laughs> fingers crossed. And a picture of a nice black wind still. Flamingos, we will see them everywhere. A few more nice pictures of hoopoos. Oh, white storks, they will be everywhere. You will see so many white storks on this trip. And it's interesting because um, Obviously, the white storks used to migrate to Africa, but they now stay here during the winter. So we see them on all the trips, November, February, March, uh, in huge numbers, actually. Um, and they eat the, the crayfish, um, the invasive crayfish. So it's good. Um, here, the osprey as well. Uh, lots of waders and the salt pans. Um, so it'll be really nice to um, identify and identify them all. So after two days in the Tegut uh, Estuary Nature Reserve, we will travel to Turina, as you saw on the map, on the other side of Portugal. Right in the middle, we will stop at Évora for lunch. Top uh, Évora. And just before we get into the town, I will have a little stop in uh, to show you um, a nice, interesting cultural side of Portugal. Uh, we will have a visit of the Almendrish Kronlek. So these are megalithic structures. There are many of these uh, spread across the Alentejo and these are the most well-known. So it's a stone circle. It's nice because it's also set amongst cork oak. Uh, so it, there's also time uh, for birding on the way there. Um, up here at the top is the interpretation center. Uh, so we can do a quick loo break and there's also some nice shopping to be done there. Really nice books uh, about Portugal and about the megalithic structures. Um, really nice olive oils and things like that. So we'll do that. After that, we'll go into Eura, as I said, where we will have some lunch at a local restaurant, maybe some uh, tapas or things like that. Uh, and down here, we've got the Diana Roman Temple, which is a really nice... Um, place we can visit and actually it, it's not a, it's not a really a big walk I mean um, the Evora is a really small town um and walk around it it doesn't take that very long and it's not very steep so it's a nice little walk and we always give you time to to have some free time so this is Trina this is the lodge we stay at uh, Erdade Dom Pedro so Dom Pedro um, and I mean, I just, I just feel at home there. It's a really nice uh, place. It's at the top of a hill. Here on the right-hand side, at the top, you see the view from the back. This is a nice sunset here. Um, you can see a uh, view from the front of the house. Here on the right-hand side, at the bottom, is the um, the house. Uh, the sorry, the the living room where we always do the checklist at the end of the day. And this. Um, this fireplace is uh, is always on. So Freddie, the owner of the house, always has it on. It is a little bit cold here because it's in the interior of Portugal. It does get a little very There are heaters, there are blankets, and and this fireplace is always lit. Here at the 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 middle, I have breakfast because it's a really nice breakfast at this Erdad. Um, lots of fruits, lots of croissants, and lots of nice uh, local um, cheese. 
Right. So this is another interesting thing that we do on this trip. Uh, this is a very different trip, I think, from the other ones. There's lots of culture, lots of stargazing, uh, but also wine. So we do visit a winery on this trip. Um, a few pictures from the winery. We usually have a guided walk around. And at the end, we do try the wine. Um, these are vin the vineyards here at the bottom uh, on the left. Um, uh, and I always take my scope because I could, as you can see on the far back, there is a lake and there are always some interesting birds to see there. So yeah, wine tasting. <laughs> um, these are a few pictures of the towns that we visit. Uh, on the left-hand side, the two pictures are from Tirene. So our lodge is very close to a very small town called Tirene. We will visit and you will, you will be surprised that it is very empty. Um, not many people live there. It is the interior of Portugal. Most of the people have gone to the small um, cities like Lisbon. Um, but it's empty, but it's a really nice, uh, quaint village. Here at the top... Um, Right, I've got Ponte da Ajuda, so Ajuda's Bridge. This is another spot that I like to take people to, either for picnic or at the end of the day. And at the end of the day, I've had really nice views. We have really nice views of common cranes just flying over. Um, on the other side is Spain. So this is a, a, a really old uh, Roman bridge that used to cross the river. The new bridge is just on the right-hand side. It's not on the picture. And here's a market, is Istrimoj market. Um, we, ca we, we can't always visit it because it's on a Saturday only. And I think it's the first Saturday of the month, if I'm not mistaken. But when we can, I do try and, and take the group there because it's nice to just to get the get to know the local culture, uh, buy some local uh, food for the picnics as well, and just buy some souvenirs. Wow! So, what about the birds? Um, little busters. Um, I always uh, am very happy to see them because they are declining in Portugal rapidly, unfortunately. So it's really nice to get a good view of them. So little busters here at the bottom. We've got the Iberian grey shrike, common crane. Uh, the common crane, if you come on the March trip, unfortunately, we probably won't see it because they have left. So the common cranes arrive usually around mid-November and leave around mid-February. So in March, might not see it. Um, at the bottom here, Cataligrid. Griffin vultures, great bustards, red-legged partridge, the great bustards. Uh, are amazing to see these huge birds. I usually go up to Campo Maior, so north of the lodge, and we usually have a good view of them. Uh, once we saw them amongst the little bursts, which was an amazing view. Um, stargazing. So as I said, we do a couple of uh, sessions at the um, observatory. This is on the left-hand side here at the top. This is the observatory. They've got the big scopes up there. And at the bottom here and on the right, this was during the day and we were doing the, the sun viewing session. Here is Nunu on the right-hand side. He's usually the guy that uh, guides us to the stars. He's a uh, local. A few of the pictures from the astronomy bits. I won't go into much detail because I'm the I'm the birder and the wildlife guide. I'm not the astronomy guide, uh, but I've got some nice pictures for the people that uh, are into the astronomy bit. Flowers, yes, we can see a few of the flowers. Um, usually March, March is the best trip, and even um, the February trip, we sometimes see a few of these flowers. Uh, this one here, the autumn crocus, uh, we see it in November, of course, as well. And uh, it's not just birds, is it? We've got the uh, the frogs, the salamanders, the butterflies. So we're always looking into all of that. Um, and uh, they're usually around the fire salamander. Actually, we took this picture. We went, we went out once for dinner um, from the lodge, the wooden lodge, the first one we stay at. Uh, we saw that one there. I think it had rained a little bit uh, during the evening. And so they were all out. It was lovely. Um, right, uh, now I want to tell you a little bit about the spring in southern Portugal trip. This one is in April, uh, so it's a little bit different. We've got the migrants, we've got lots of different species from the, uh, the first trip that I was telling you about. A little map. Um, on this one, you fly into Faro, not Lisbon. So I will pick you up here in Faro, uh, in the Algarve. And what we will do is we will drive east and then up north to Mertula. And that's where we stay for three nights in Mertula. From Mertula, we will explore a little bit further north. We will go into Castro Verde, uh, Urique. So we will explore this area around here. 
Um, and then after that, for the next four nights, we will go down to Sagres. So on the left-hand side here, Sagres, we will stay at a, a hotel overlooking uh, the sea. And we will explore uh, Sagres, we will explore Lagos, and we will go up to Algezur as well and explore that area there. Uh, so that's, um, that's it for the map. This is Mertula. Uh, Mertula is just this amazing hilltop uh, village. You can see the castle here at the top. On the right hand side here, you've got the hotel that we stay at. The hotel is called Beira Rio, which means by the river. <laughs> As you can see, we are by the river. And from here, you can already do lots of bird watching just from your balcony. Here on the left hand side are the lesser kestrels. So they breed in the village and we will have um, many, many chances to see them. Um, very, very close by, which is really nice. Um, we will visit a couple of spots. As I said, we will go to Pulu do Lobo. Pulu do Lobo means uh, the wolf's leap. Um, and it's just this place where the river kind of gets pinched. Um, and uh, you'll see, we'll see lots of different birds like griffin vulture, blue rock thrushes. We might see cenarius vulture, rock bunting. Um, bee eaters, woodcut tracks, and it's I said already, uh, golden eagle, uh, and if it's a lovely spot, we will spend a morning here, we will have our picnic, um, somewhere there are some picnic tables up there, and we will just enjoy this place for a little while. Um, around Mertula, it's interesting because we can see a lot of the key birds on this trip, like the black-bellied sand grouse, calandra lark, uh, and even we will visit some of these smaller like lagoons or um, uh, dams, and we will see things like the great crested gree, the common snipe. Uh, so there's lots to see, um, not very far from the hotel, and if people want, we can always come back to the hotel drop them off, um, and maybe if people want to have a look around the town instead, even I will take people around the town in the morning. Um, so it's a very relaxed um, time here in Mertula. Um, as I said, from Mertula, we will visit Castro Verde, and Castro Verde is just the mecca for birdwatching in uh, Portugal. So uh, when people think about birding in um, Portugal, most people think Algarve, but I think Castro Verde is also becoming a place where many people come to. Uh, and what can we see in Castro Verde? Uh, little bustard. We will try again to look for the little bustard. Red light partridge, great bustard. Um, obviously the white storks, they will be everywhere. Little owls, short coat snake eagles, Montague's harrows, Spanish imperial eagle, alpine swift, black winged kites, European roller. So it'll just be <laughs> an amazing time full of birds and all sorts of different um, species. What we will do is on the day where we go down to Sagres, we will have a stop midpoint in Lagoa do Chalgados. And Lagoa do Chalgados is, as you, as you can see, it's a lagoon. And on this side, uh, you still have the sea. So we, we can also have a, a, a little look at the sea. Uh, it's actually threatened by a big uh, hotel that they want to build. There is a... Um, uh, we do want to try and, and make it a natural reserve, but anyway, it's all up in the air at the moment. So it's a really nice place to see glossy ibis, purple and grey heron, purple swamp hen, all sorts of waders, all sorts of ducks. So it's just a really nice uh, walk. We, there are a few hides we can look um, and um, there is a nice um, walk we can do around. So when we get to Sagres, this is our hotel. So on the left-hand side, this is our hotel. This is the view from the sea. Uh, and on the right-hand side here at the bottom is the view from the hotel out to the sea. So you see it's got a little uh, pool you can use if the weather is good. Um, and these are just some pictures from Sagres. Uh, you, it's a completely different scenery from where we were in Mertula. Um, we can look out at the sea. You will be able to see things from your, your balcony. Um, what we do is, on the first day after we arrive from Sagres, we will go a little bit north and we will visit this mountain range called Spinhaço de Cão. It's got a really funny name. Anyway, so we will 
it's an interesting sort of habitat because we will have the cork forest. We've got we'll have lots of sisters, um, sister species, and we will be looking at common nightingale, chiff chaff, Iberian chiff chaff, crested tit, um, things like that. And um, after we visit Pinhaço do Cão, we will move to Algezure, and that's again by the beach. This is Praia da Amoreira in Algezure. We will explore uh, the plants at the dunes. We will have good views uh, of, of birds as well out at the sea. I've got a picture here of the sandwich turn, which is a possibility there. There's also some lagoons. Not It's not on the picture here, but on the right-hand side, there are a few lagoons inland that we can have a good look at. Uh, and on one of the days we visit Alvor. So this is a, a really, really important estuary in the Algarve. So we will uh, be parking here on the right-hand side uh, of the picture. There's a little car park here. On the left-hand side of the picture, sorry, there's a little car park here. So we'll park here and we have a little walk looking out, looking into the lagoons. And even on the on the drive, we can look uh, at the salt pan there and we will have a look out at the sea as well. We might see Odwin's gull, there will be flamingos everywhere, um, spoonbills, uh, even butterflies. There's a picture of a monarch butterfly here that people saw um, in, in, on the trip. And we will visit Boca do Rio in Sagres, so that's a, 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 um, a little bit closer to the hotel. And there's a nice picture here of a Savi's warbler, uh, which you, I haven't put the sound here, but I don't know if people from the England know, but you should listen to the sound, it's a really cool bird um and this is the final day i'm afraid of the trip on the final day we will um not drive very far from the hotel and we will explore the uh, sagrish fortress so we can actually go into this fortress and have a good uh walk around here there will be red built chaps flying around peregrine falcons again it's up at the sea um we will have European sags, red run swallows, and I also put a little picture of this nice orchid that they saw on a trip last year, I think it was, um, because we will always, always be looking at the flowers and not just the birds. And that's it for my um, presentation.